Okay, so in this lecture, we will look at a few illustrative examples. So we have written down the prescription for solving a second order inhomogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. We first wrote down a prescription for solving the homogeneous one. And then we also said how if you can find a particular solution for the inhomogeneous differential equation, we can, you know, couple this with this, uh, the general solution of the homogeneous equation and write down the general solution even for an inhomogeneous differential equation, right. Specifically, we saw how, you know, there are methods available if the forcing term, you know, the term which appears on the right hand side is of a, you know, special kind, right. So, we will look at, you know, uh, examples of this kind. So, uh, even when, uh, you know, the forcing term is of the special kind, it is useful to look at a few examples and see how the theory works out in practice. So, that is what this lecture is about. Okay, the first example is d squared y by dx squared minus 3 dy by dx plus 2 y is equal to x squared times e to the x, right. So, notice that the right hand side is a little more complicated than the kind we have already looked at. So, you have a quadratic expression times an exponential, right. So, the left hand side of course, you should start by factoring it. It is a quadratic form, so it can be factored and you have d minus 2 times d minus 1 times y and the right hand side is as it is x square times e to the x. So, the complementary function is straightforward to write down, right. So, it is you know these roots are available 2 and 1 for this auxiliary uh, quadratic equation and uh, they are real and distinct. So, it is very straightforward to write down. So, the complementary function is simply c1 times e to the 2x plus c2 times e to the x. So, according to the prescription, we must uh, look for a particular solution of the form, right. So, what is the form that we must choose? So, we see that on the right hand side, we have an x squared. So, there is a quadratic function. So, we will have to uh, uh, look for a polynomial of the same degree. So, we will have to look for something like ax squared plus bx plus c and then times, you know, you have this exponential e to the x. So, it turns out that you know this coefficient here e to the cx we have. So, the c matches with one of the roots of the uh, polynomial here. So, we must choose x times e to the to the x and so we have this is our onzots for the particular uh, solution. So, we look for a solution of the form x times e to the x times a x squared plus b x plus c. So, we need to find these coefficients a, b and c such that you know this becomes a particular solution of the differential equation. So, we will have to evaluate what dy by dv dy p by dx is and then collect all these terms carefully. So, you have all these terms collected together. You have an x cube and x squared x and and a c. There is a common exponential e to the x which comes out. Then when we do a second derivative once again, you know, you carefully collect terms and you know, I have worked out the algebra, you can cross check this, you get e to the x times a x cube plus 6 a plus b the whole times x squared plus 6 a plus 4 b plus c times x plus 2 times b plus c, right. So, then we say once we have these expressions for the second derivative and the first derivative, we have to go back and plug back into the original differential equation. So, you have, you know, this whole stuff for the second derivative minus 3 times this stuff for the second derivative uh, for the first derivative plus 2 times the function itself must be equal to x square times e to the x, right. And this must hold for all values of x. So, you can cancel these e to the x's throughout and so you are left with just this equation minus 3a plus x squared plus 6a minus 2b times x plus 2b minus c must be equal to x square, right. And this again must hold for all values of x. So, it immediately implies that a itself must be equal to one third and 2b equal to 6a which means b equal to 3a. So, 3 times a is minus 1 and c must be equal to 2b. So, that gives us c equal to minus 2 and so our particular solution is yp is e to the x divided by 3 into x cube plus 3x squared plus 6x, right. So, you can go back and check that this is indeed you know, if you operate with this stuff d minus 2 times d minus 1 and if you operate with on top of 
in this function you must get x square times e to the x right so you can you know directly work this out and explicitly check that indeed your final answer is a particular solution right so this check must be done to be sure that you know there is all this algebra as you can see even for a fairly simple problem there is a you know a fair amount of algebra is involved and it is possible to make mistakes so you must look at your answer and check whether it is indeed a particular solution and once you have seen that it doesn't matter which particular solution you find and it in fact doesn't matter how you find it as long as it is a particular solution you just string it along with your general solution for the corresponding homogeneous uh, problem which is called a complementary function which we already wrote down and then we have the full general solution for our differential equation which is just given by this you know this expression minus e to the x divided by 3 times x cube plus 3x squared plus 6x plus c1 times e to the 2x plus c2 times e to the x. Okay, so let us look at another example. So here I have a sine of x on the right hand side. I have a fairly you know simple left hand side. I am choosing simple left hand sides. Is it uh, the same as what we have here? No, slightly different, it does not matter, right. So, you can play with this, right. So, I am just giving you a full few examples, you know, uh, where the factoring is fairly simple. I want to show you an example where the right hand side has a sinusoid. So, I told you how if you have a sine of x on the right hand side, it is convenient to, you know, first of all you must factor the left hand side. So, in this case it is d minus 3 times d plus 1 times y, right, as you can check minus 3, 3 y comes in here, minus 3 plus 1 which is minus 2, so it is it's, it's, it's all right. So, I have the factorization on the left hand side and right hand side when you have a sinusoid, it is convenient to consider just the exponential, right. So, you look at a more general problem and so you can see that if you can find a solution for this problem, it is going to be a complex function and so then you argue that you have this linear operator which acts upon this function to give you a you know, the, there is a real part and, a, and an imaginary part. So, the real part uh, of this will be a solution to, uh, you know, this differential equation with cos x on the right hand side and the imaginary part will be a solution to uh, this differential equation with sin x on the right hand side. So, in our case, it is the imaginary part that we care about, right. It is just a, you know, trick one uses. But if you do not want to use a trick, another way to do this is to look for an onslaught of the form a sin x plus b cos x, right. Both sin x and cos x have to be included if you do not want to do it like here. Uh, so, let us do it, you know, with e times e, uh, e to the i x here. But if you do not want to, you can also try it. It is, uh, you know, it is left as an exercise for you to make the onslaught. Uh, a sin x plus b cos x and work out the coefficients a and b. Okay, so in this case, the complementary function is is simple to write down, right? We know how to do it. It's just minus e to the minus x and e to the three x with coefficients c one and two, which are arbitrary. They are, you know, this is the solution for the homogeneous uh, differential equation, which corresponds to this, uh, you know, in homogeneous differential equation. So, to find a particular solution, we impose the form y p is equal to a times e to the i x, right. So, I emphasize once again that this is a particular solution for this differential equation, which is a slight way, is a variant of the original problem. And now, we have the first derivative is just a times i times e to the i x. The second derivative is minus a times e to the i x. So, i squared will give you a minus 1. And now, if you go back and plug this you know all these expressions back into the original differential equation but with the right hand side equal to e to the ix. So, you have d squared y by dx squared minus 2 dy by dx minus 3y is equal to you know minus a e to the ix minus 2 times a times i times e to the ix minus 3 a e to the ix which is minus 2 a times 2 plus i times e to the ix. We want this to be equal to e to the ix. When will this happen? If this coefficient minus 2 a times 2 plus i is equal to 1 or equivalently if you choose your constant a, this coefficient a to be minus 1 over 2 times 2 plus i which you can simplify right to minus 1 over 10 times 2 minus i. But really we are interested in 
the imaginary part of this right so this will be the particular solution for this modified differential equation where the right hand side is taken to be e to the x so for for us it's of interest to find the imaginary part of this because that's going to be the particular solution of this original problem of interest right so the imaginary part of this function is is simply just 1 over 10 times cosine of x minus 1 over phi times sine of x as you can verify you should check that indeed we have got the algebra right you should take this function you know you have to be careful you know there are these i's hanging around there is a e to the i x so the simplest way is of course to expand this cosine x plus i times sine x and then collect all these expand out entirely and write it as some real part plus i times imaginary part and so it's the imaginary part that you must work with and so in fact you will get this answer and then to be absolutely sure you must plug this back into your original differential equation and check that when you operate with d squared by dx squared minus 2 d by dx minus 3 when it acts upon this yp it must give you sine of x right so as you see the this y particular that we have obtained has both cosine and sine right you could as well have you know started your onsorts with a cosine x plus b sine x and you would still have recovered basically the same particular solution so now you couple this particular solution with the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous equation also known as the complementary function and you have the full general solution of the original problem which is just 1 over 10 cosine of x minus 1 over 5 sine of x plus c1 e to the minus x plus c2 e to the 3x right so we will look at one more example which is a little more complicated than the uh, kinds we have seen right so you can ha have a scenario where you have you know x squared plus e to the x appears on the right hand side you can have even more complicated uh, functions appearing on the right hand side you can you know consider e to the x e to the 2x e to the 3x whatever you can add them all up then you can think of this as uh, you know you, you must find particular solutions for each type of forcing term on the right hand side and add them up right so in this case let's look at you know the left hand side of course you must factor it out so it's a simple factorization i have chosen the left hand side to be fairly simple it's d minus 2 times d minus 1 times y is equal to x squared plus e, e to the x so to find the particular solution that's where the art form is right so the complementary function is of course simply c1 times e to the 2x plus c2 times e to the x to find a particular solution we make the onsorts you know we need a quadratic function because x squared you know appears on the right hand side but we also have to choose d times x times e to the x right so here you have to be careful you have e to the x here and you see that there is also an e to the x which appears in the solution of the homogeneous equation so then you cannot use e to the x itself as we have seen the theory is that if you have you know the one of the roots of your auxiliary equation matches with this coefficient in the exponential on the right hand side you must choose x times e to the x so that's what i have done so d times x times e to the x so i see that i have four coefficients which i have to determine right so in principle you would have a you know four linear equations in four variables which can be quite complicated but you will see that simplifications appear and then it's it's not as difficult as you might imagine even if there are four coefficients to be determined you can try even more complicated variants right so it's a uh, I mean you can cook up problems of your own and to uh, you know really get a solid understanding of this method so the first thing is of course to write down the onsorts then you have to find the derivative and the second derivative so the derivative you know will have linear term and then of course you know this x times e to the x will give you both x times e to the x and also just e to the x when you take another derivative you will get 2d times e to the x dx times e to the x remains that as it is and then you have this constant so if you plug all these back into your original differential equation the left hand side you will get you know this complicated looking expression which simplifies so you have this stuff from which come from the second derivative minus three times the first derivative plus two times the function itself you collect all these terms carefully so you have a quadratic term then linear part then there's a constant then you have a minus d to the d times e to the x so you will notice that already we have uh, you know chosen our particular function in, in such a manner that uh, you know this term involving x times e to the x already vanishes so you don't have to worry about this at all 
So in the end, we want only x squared and e to the x, e x squared plus e to the x to be precise on the right hand side. So immediately we see that d is something we can fix. D should be minus 1 and then you will get an e to the x and the others also you can fix. So we have, so a of course has to be just half because x squared must come on the right hand side. Once you fix a, you see that 2b minus 6a must be equal to 0. There is no linear term on the right hand side. So b is equal to 3a, so 3 by 2. And then if you know b and you know a, you can work out c and it works out to 7 by 4. And d of course we have already seen is minus 1. Right, so the key argument here is of course this equality must hold for all values of x. So term by term this must agree on both sides and therefore it works out. Right, so you can you know check that the final you know on the, for final particular solution that we have is indeed a particular solution. So to do that you must take this uh, this function and directly plug it in back into your original differential equation. Right, so you must plug it in and operate this function with d squared by dx squared minus 3 times d by dx plus 2. You must operate with this and verify that indeed you get x squared plus e to the x. And if that holds, it doesn't matter how you have arrived at this particular solution. If it's a particular solution, it's a particular solution and then that's enough for us. We, uh, we can use that along with the complementary function and write down the full answer the complete gen general solution for the full inhomogeneous differential equation here is given to be just 2x squared plus 6x plus 7 divided by 4 minus x times e to the x plus c1 times e to the 2x plus c c2 times e to the x. So hopefully these examples will help you get a hand hang of you know the, the theoretical methods we have laid down earlier. I would urge you to tweak these examples you know come up with your own versions of this problem and get a really solid understanding of the me this method and this will this extend also to higher orders but for our purposes we have found it convenient to just stick to second order. So that's all for this lecture. Thank you.